Hello, this is Dr. Jerry Lloyd, and we talked the last time about a message that took place in the temple in Jerusalem where Jesus spoke to his disciples about the destruction of the temple. And we they came to him then and asked two questions. We talked about those last time, but we're going to look at the answer to those two questions today. To recap a little bit so we know what we're talking about or remember, it's been a few days, let's read what he said, what God said beforehand. He says, And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, As for these things which ye behold, the days will come in which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And... What sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said unto them, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. So the first sign would be that there would be people that would come, calling themselves the Christ. But when ye hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. The end of what? Well, what were they asking? They were asking about the end of the temple when the, the people would be destroyed. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. The nations he's talking about there, wouldn't nation and kingdom be about the same thing? Well, kind of, but no, the, the word for nation there is ethnos, where we get the term ethnic group, and it's talking about races, that you had the Latins, the, Latin, the, the Romans, and you had the, the, the uh, Semitic group, the Hebrews, the Jews. And so the, you had the Romans against the Jews, and then you also had kingdom against kingdom. You had Rome against Israel. So that's the difference between those two. And that took place. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. Pay attention to that because we have a fellow that records these things. He was a Jewish historian who was hired by the Romans. So he had recorded these things that took place. And he was there at the time. So there will be earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines. We're going to read about the famines. He was there. He recorded the famines. And pestilences and fearful sights and great signs there shall there be from heaven. All these things are recorded for history by Josephus. But before all these things, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you and deliver you up to the synagogues and into prisons being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. These are recorded in the book of Acts. So all of those things were fulfilled before the temple was destroyed in A.D. 70. And uh, so let me read you a few of these signs. In, on, in this book by Josephus, I've got the hardback, some of the hardback here, a set of those. But this one here, it's all combined into one assault back. And uh, we find out that, first of all, I sleep, read what God says, or excuse me, it's not God, it's Josephus, says, nor did any one of these escape for it with his life. A false prophet, that's what he said, was the occasion of these people's destruction, who had made a public proclamation in the city that very day that God commanded them to get up unto the temple, and that there they should be saved. And they would receive miraculous signs of their deliverance. Now there was then a great number of false prophets, suborn, hired, by the tyrants to impose upon the people who denounced this to them, that they should wait for deliverance from God. Thus were the miserable people persuaded by these deceivers, and such as believed God himself. 
while they did not attend nor give credit to the signs that were so evident and did so plainly foretell their future desolation. But like men infatuated without either eyes to see or minds to consider, did not regard the denunciations that God made to them. Thus there were a, was a star resembling a, a sword which stood over the city, and a comet get, that continued a whole year. I suppose the account of it would be a fable, would deem, seem to be a fable were it not related by those that saw it, and were not the events that followed it so considerable a nature as to deserve such signals. For before the sun setting, chariots and troops of soldiers in their armor were seen running about among the clouds. Hmm, interesting. Seen running about among the clouds and surrounding the cities over at that feast which was called Pentecost. They felt a quaking and heard a great noise. And after that they heard a sound as of a great multitude saying, let us remove hence. But what is still more terrible, there was one Jesus, the son of Annas, Annas, I guess it is, a plebeian, and an husbandman who four years before the war began, and he began to prophesy. So we see the signs in the heavens, the earthquakes that God talked about, and that they were fulfilled, not only were they fulfilled, but the record of their fulfillment is recorded by a secular historian, not necessarily a believer in Jesus Christ. Some other things that we'd like to share with you over uh, in where he talks about famines. Let me read you a little bit about the famine. It was now a miserable case, in a sight that would justly bring tears into our eyes, how men stood as to their food, while the more powerful had more than enough, and the weaker were lamenting for want of it. But the famine was too hard for all other passions, said insomuch that children pulled the very morsels that their fathers were eating. And, and out of their very mouths, and what was still more to be pitied, so did the mothers do with the, the infants. Nor was there any commiseration shown either to the aged or the infants, but they lifted up children from the ground and, and hung them from the morsels that they had gotten, and shook them down upon the floor. But it, as we read on here, we find out the things that God recorded and the in the book of Acts as being fulfilled of these prophecies. Let's see what he says. He says, and it, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it not in your hearts, nor meditate before what you shall answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all the adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. All of the apostles were killed before A.D. 70, except for John. So the apostolic age had come to an end, and we'll read about that next time. But the apostolic age had come to an end, and the, but it is all recorded in the book of Acts how that they used it. It turned to them for a testimony to be able to preach either, even all the way to Rome. And listen to what he says about this. Now it says that some shall be put to death. Let's see what he says about that. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. What? Didn't he just say that some would be put to death? In fact, all of them were martyred, except the Apostle John, before the destruction of the temple and the city of Jerusalem. And then two years later, the whole nation fell at Masada. So what, what does it mean that not a hair of your head would perish if they were going to die? Oh, when God talks about perishing, he usually, or many times, of course, is talking about dying physically. But what is the most obvious thing to us? Well, it's John 3:16, where God tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. 
So when we believe in Jesus Christ, we don't have to worry about perishing. We may die. In fact, for thousands of years, everybody has. So we're going to die. But where we go when we die is whether we perish spiritually or not. How can we be certain of having everlasting life? Well, because it doesn't depend on you. It depends on what God did. God did the loving. God gave, did the giving. And he offers us everlasting life. Only thing he requires of us that we do the believing. We believe that he has died and paid for our sins. All have sin. And God has taken all of our sin and placed it upon Jesus Christ almost 2,000 years ago. And then he died and paid for sins. He died for wages of sin being death. So that we don't have to perish in the lake of fire. We have everlasting life. God did the loving. God did the giving. We believe it. And then there are two results. Should not perish. Should not go to the lake of fire. But have, right now, everlasting life. If you've never trusted Jesus, God's word is sure. It is when things that, when it comes time for them to be fulfilled, they are fulfilled. And God proves it through history, through other verses of Scripture. But when He says something, you can bank it. 1 John 5.13, what can you bank? These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that you have eternal life. Yeah, you can take that to the bank. You can know it. You have it now. Not will have it someday in the future, but you have it now, and it's eternal, so you can never lose it. All you have to do is believe it. If you'll do that, then you can know you're going to heaven. Just trust Jesus to get you there. and he, He's already done what it takes. He won't even have to do anything. Just trust him, and then you have, at that moment, everlasting life. This is Dr. Jerry Lloyd, and if you like this, then share it with others. Maybe they can trust Christ as Savior. Might be an avenue of them for you to talk to them about the Lord. Something maybe to spark their interest. And like this so that maybe it'll get a few more views. This is Dr. Jerry Lloyd. Thank you very much. <laughs>